Today, we take two superpowers, USA and USSR ground tech from 1945 and prior to find out who would win even when asking participants to switch sides during the rounds. Will the winning country's tech be what you'd expect? Today, we put these two to the test. Who will you vote for? We'll be doing three rounds. First will be a 20 versus 20, where participants can choose anything they want as long as the tank was officially developed before the end of 1945 and prior. Some purposely choosing vehicles of earlier years, either for a tactic or balancing reasons. Then in round two, asking participants to switch sides in a 20 versus 20, and then in our final round with infinite response and a limited time to see which side can knock out more vehicles. When comparing the two sides from my experience just playing them in War Thunder, Soviet tanks are known for their armor, big guns which can lead to long reload times, and poor gun depression, whereas USA seems to have a jack of all trades dynamic, some with good speed, decent gun depression, a variety of more armor than others being slower, and a love for their 50 cals, and seems like they're much easier to get their barrels shot out compared to some other countries countries I've tried. So far in round one, we see more Soviet tanks making a push on the flank across the lake, while a Super Pershing also tries to advance in that direction. With more USA tanks making a push for it through the town, this could leave the Soviet tanks to be outmatched on this side. A very risky position on what seems like for a Hellcat having no armor in such close quarters, and with their heavier vehicles already close behind, but may be able to get a sneak off shot while some Soviet tanks push through. bringing USA ahead by one. 18 Soviets versus 19 USA tanks left. I'm really needing to check around corners before advancing in this urban situation, as with the battle being mostly already in town, each side will need to look at their map to understand what areas might be more clear than others when pushing through. And one of the advantages of these smaller tanks being able to hide and wait for the enemies to pass so they can get behind them and cause what trouble they can. Soviets on the flank surprisingly able to take out more of the US tanks advancing through the town than I was expecting. Being a little over 4 minutes in with 4 tanks down on the Soviet side and 5 on the US. Now 6. Soviet team seem to be playing it more patiently while the US side playing it more aggressive could help move things towards the Soviets' favor. The 
34100 well angled here coming around the corner and using the HE shell won't be able to harm much of any of the tank. And what a crazy shot you could have actually seen the T-44 shell hit the side of the IS tank's turret while still being able to knock out its opponent downrange. These M8's rockets only having 1.95 kilograms of explosive mass or 24 millimeters of pen, the M4 had to use its shell, I think, to get through. These US tanks holding the side, I believe, would have been better off helping their team in town. Now leading the score down to the last U.S. vehicle to stand between a first round victory for the Soviet side. A final score leaving the Soviet vehicles to win the first round and only losing eight vehicles. We now ask our participants to switch sides to see if the outcome changes. Some still choosing to stay, but still going on 20 versus 20 on Stalingrad. Let's see if round two's outcome will change. Already, the Soviets making the bulk of their advance on one side of the map, while US seems to almost be equally divided engaging each side, with just a little less on where the majority of the Soviet tanks are making their push. U.S. Jumbo making a bit of a very aggressive advance here. Realizing the U.S. is outnumbered on this side, they seem to be moving to a more defensive tactic. Three minutes in, with three down on U.S., while one down on the Soviets. Now, two. Pushed by the Soviet team, leaving there to only be one U.S. tank left holding this side. The left side now finishing off the last U.S. tank about five minutes in. The score comes down to seven on the U.S. and five on the Soviets.
exactly what I mean by the U.S. tanks seem to get their barrels knocked out easier. Helping to push the T-95 would have engaged more than push. It could have helped their team more. Being nine minutes in and all but one U.S. tank down with seven Soviet tanks left. This still did not seem to work out too well for U.S. even when asking participants to switch sides. How will this last T-95 do? Like another victory for the Soviet ground tech with the T-95's tracks taken out. We mix up players again for round three, but this time with our infinite respawns on and limited time. Can US make a comeback in our final round, or will this look like a complete domination for the Soviet side? We now go to advance to the Rhine to see what happens. This time, the majority of U.S. staying closer together to make their push down one side, while the Soviet team seems to be more evenly spread out advancing down the map. A very brazen move by the BT, advancing too far forward. Not sure what he was trying to accomplish here. finding themselves very outnumbered on the flank try to take defensive positions while the U.S. tanks make their push. Such a suicidal rush by U.S. on their side with fewer support. IS-6 not making an appearance until round three due to research being done and finding out two prototypes were actually developed in the fall of 1944, making them qualify for this face-off. With over 300 millimeters of frontal armor, the T-95 is something the Soviet team did not want to get in front of, which I don't blame them.
Six minutes in and the US team has 24 kills and Soviets at 14, making this look like a comeback for Team US. And it was fun watching this M22 player showcasing how pesky or devastating such a small tank can be. While the Soviet team almost seems to barely notice he's there. BT player on the Soviet side doing the same to US. <laughs> and not something you want to be staring down the barrel of being such a tiny fella. Excellent roof shot from the KV-2, making it so the explosive mass from its HE shell was able to overpressure the area. Three minutes left of the round in USA being at 44 kills and Soviets at 35. Will US be the winner of this final round? minute left on the clock. coming down to 59 kills for US and 46 for the Soviet team. The USA takes the victory for the third round. Hope you all enjoyed this vid. You guys all stay cool and keep tanking.